In April 1945, Adolf Hitler received devastating news. The Nazi empire he had built with his own hands was collapsing around him, destroyed inch by inch by the Allies. The Red Army of the Soviet Union had made its triumphal entry into Berlin and had had the luxury of bombing the city on the Fuhrer's birthday. In this context, while he was taking refuge in an underground bunker, the dictator received a report that left him petrified. Heinrich Himmler, who was his right-hand man, had tried to negotiate peace with the Allies at his own expense, without having been authorized to do so. Feeling betrayed, Hitler had him tracked down and arrested on the spot. However, there was something that the Nazi leader could not stop thinking about. Himmler could not have done all this alone, he was sure that he had received help from someone else. The Fuhrer could not be sure of this, but there was an SS officer who had displayed suspicious behavior during the previous days. His name was Hermann Fijelein and he was one of the most loved and appreciated men by Eva Braun. On the other hand, Fijelein's wife was nine months pregnant, so it seemed strange that he would risk such a betrayal. Hitler, however, was certain that there was a traitor among his ranks, and was willing to do anything to find out who he was. What happened next chilled the blood of the refugees in the bunker. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we will tell you all about Hermann Fijelein. Hermann Fijelein was born on October 30, 1906 in Germany, the son of a retired Wehrmacht officer. When he was 21 years old, he dropped out of college and joined the Bavarian police force as a cadet. Although it seemed that he had a promising career ahead of him, the illusion was short-lived, as two years later Fijelein was found stealing the results of an exam to rise in rank. As expected, he was expelled from the police, although thanks to his father's connections the scandal was covered up so that it would not get any further. In this way, the official statement maintained that the boy had decided to voluntarily resign for family reasons. With nowhere else to go, our protagonist ended up in the National Socialist Party. Fijelein was tall, blonde and blue-eyed, so he perfectly met the requirements to be considered a full-blooded German. This is how, in 1933, his entry into the SS was approved, the elite organization of Nazism, which only opened its doors to the most select members of the supposed Aryan race. Back then he dreamed of glory in the world of sports. His passion was horse riding, an activity with which he had been well acquainted from a young age. Although he tried to get into the German Olympic jockey team, he was rejected every time. Seeing his dream frustrated, he threw himself fully into promoting his career within National Socialism. Fijelein's greatest achievement was in getting close to Heinrich Himmler, the SS leader, and becoming one of his trusted men based on flattery. He was successively promoted through the ranks until, in 1939, on the eve of World War II, he was appointed commander of an SS cavalry regiment. Although he had never attended a military officer's school, he managed to instill discipline among his men and create strong bonds of camaraderie between them. When the war broke out, Fijelein and his unit were mobilized to Poland, where they were placed at the service of the Nazi police who were supervising the occupation of the country. The regiment was subdivided into small groups, whose task was to patrol the streets and keep the population at bay. On December 7, 1939, Fijelein's unit was involved in a war crime for the first time. Hitler had given the order to exterminate the Polish elite, a category that included aristocrats, intellectuals, political leaders, and priests. As a good follower of the Fuhrer, our protagonist, seconded by his troops, led 1,700 people to the Campinos Forest, located to the west of Warsaw. All of them were mercilessly massacred in a mass execution operation. From then on, Fijelein's regiment would be involved in various crimes against humanity perpetrated against the inhabitants of Poland. They included robbery, murder and rape of defenseless civilians, although in his official reports, 
the commander always argued that his troops' behavior was decent. Fijilein's crimes reached such a point that they were denounced by other German officers. In 1941 he was accused of having appropriated money from the army and of having murdered prisoners of war in order to appropriate their possessions. On the other hand, it was said that he had had sexual relations with a Polish woman, something that was strictly prohibited. Adding to the scandal, it was claimed that he had impregnated her and that, upon learning of it, he had forced her to have an abortion. Fijilein escaped harsh punishment thanks to the intervention of his protector, Heinrich Himmler, who cleared him of all charges. When the Third Reich launched to conquer the Soviet Union at the end of 1941, our protagonist was assigned there along with his entire regiment. In this period he was infamous for his role in the Pripute massacres. A large number of Jews had hidden in that area of Belarus, a set of swamps that provided a good hiding place. Himmler ordered the SS to scour the region and capture all the Jews hiding there. Following the instructions of his boss, Fijilein had all males over the age of 14 shot. On the other hand, he commanded his forces to drown the women and children in the waters of the swamp. It is estimated that some 14,000 people were killed in this horrifying operation. Our protagonist continued fighting on the Eastern Front, participating in different battles against the Red Army and the Communist partisans. In September 1943 he was wounded by a Russian sniper, after which he was referred to a military hospital. Upon completion of his recovery, Himmler decided that he had proven his worth. He ordered him to return to Germany and appointed him as his liaison officer, to serve as a link between the SS and Adolf Hitler himself. That was how he entered the Führer's circle of trust and, through different dinners and social gatherings, he met his partner, Eva Braun. She was enchanted by Fijilein's friendliness and charisma, so she decided to introduce him to her younger sister, Gretel. For the SS commander, this was an opportunity to improve his social standing, and the two were married on June 3, 1944. This is how Fijilein became the brother-in-law of Adolf Hitler. However, his upward career was about to be shattered. At the beginning of 1945, it was clear that Germany would lose the war, and the Führer withdrew to a bunker with the Nazi staff. His brother-in-law was in that group, although, seeing Soviet tanks pouring into Berlin and shelling the city, he decided that he would not die in that gloomy dugout. Fijilein left the hideout under the excuse that he was leaving on a brief reconnaissance mission, although the truth was that he planned to leave the country. Seeing that he did not return, a patrol was sent to find out what had happened to him. They found him hiding in his Berlin apartment, dressed in civilian clothes, drunk and about to leave for Switzerland. He had with him copious amounts of cash and his wife's jewelry. Heinrich Himmler's documents were also found in his briefcase, containing details of his plan to make peace with the Allies. The patrol took him back to Hitler's bunker, where he was confined to a cell until his situation was clarified. As we told you at the beginning of the video, it was at that very moment, on the night of April 28, 1945, that the Führer learned of Himmler's betrayal. After ordering the arrest of the SS leader, the dictator set about discovering his accomplices. Naturally, his suspicions turned to his brother-in-law, who had tried to flee the country and who also had incriminating documentation in his briefcase. After a brief interrogation, the man confessed that he had indeed helped Himmler with the secret negotiations. Eva Braun begged Hitler to spare the life of Fijilein, who was also expecting her first child. Enraged in feeling that everyone around him was betraying him, the Führer's first decision was to send him to the vanguard of the defending army, so that he would die facing the Red Army. He later changed his mind and considered sparing his life, though his advisors told him this was a bad idea, as he might betray him again. Hitler's final decision was to sentence him to death by firing squad. In this way, 
Fijiline was led to the garden of the chancellery above the bunker and riddled with bullets. Witnesses say it was a pathetic scene, as he cried, pleaded for his life and urinated before collapsing dead. This is how the story of Hermann Fijiline, Adolf Hitler's brother-in-law, came to an end. We have reached the end of the video, leave us your comment in the box below and do not forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.